thank you for those who are tuning in via a webcam and those who are here physically present. Alhamdulillah, nice to see you. New faces and some familiar faces. Uh, this is our fifth annual uh, community needs of Tar dinner for people with disabilities. Um, in the beginning, it started out with special needs family where the Munir needed some um, people to help with this project. And I had to educate him that me and brother Ahmad are actually not technically special needs classification. We're technically people with physical disabilities, special needs disabilities, actually a different criterion. For those who do not know, like to know, it's more this, uh, cognitive issues that they, oh, sorry, forgive me, cognitive blessings that they experience um, in this dunya life. So, um, for example, we do have uh, anybody who would like to share anything. That way we can include the audience. Anybody wants to share their, uh, yes, sister in the back. Urshman is her name, brother, right? Urshman was a. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is Noor, and Urshman is the old Sunday school student at MCC. He was like a normal child, like anyone, like you are seeing, but we are old. He got hit by encephalitis, inflammation of the brain. So prior to that, he already learned how to pray Salah, how to read Quran and fasting and everything. So Alhamdulillah, he continued to do that despite, you know, his flares of encephalitis and his own struggles, like, you know, getting the acceptance from the world because it's very hard to see. Like, you don't see people who mask with disability, but he is not disabled. He is a special need and a blessed child. And um, I am very thankful to God. He gave me such a good child and such a spiritual child that he's able to do what he wants to do. And inshallah, he will get what he wants to do. But it is just like, you know, when he scream, my struggle is that because he has different kind of tics and it keeps spreading his body. Sometimes he move his neck. Sometimes he has a scream involuntarily, like you were seeing when he was doing Quran. But you know, worldly, we don't understand that that's not in his control because it's vocal tics. I'm a physician myself, and I work in Sutter system. So basically, when he does that, emotionally, it is hard to say when he tries to put khushu in salah and khushu when he's reading Quran, that's the time he has more vocal tics than the rest of the education at school or doing anything else at home. So sometimes it's very hard for us when I bring him. He is coming here at MCC and doing his 20 rakat of Taravi here. And, but it is hard because, you know, people don't understand his illness. And I won't blame them because it just needs awareness and acceptance. When we are aware, then we will be accepting the people like him or anyone else. And I think maybe if I don't have the child like him, even as a physician, we just tell, oh, you have this disease, you have this problem, oh, do this, do that. It seems to be small. When you are facing this 24-7 in front of you, then it's entirely different experience. Hello. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Audio. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, I, I do like to take this advantage to have the audience also speak. Is there anyone else who would like to share of a particular uh, special need disability that they have? Uh, the norm spoke for you, but what would you like to say? Thank you for sharing, brother. May Allah make it easier for you. Thank you. Um, so uh, I, the, the sister, what she said is a beautiful segue to what I like to also say, too. There are a lot of secondary um, conditions that come with along with our uh, special needs uh, community and also with us with physical disabilities. We may have spinal cord injuries. We may have these uh, issues or, sorry, blessings in our brain. But the secondary ones are much more complicated as well. Me and Brother Ahmed will dive into more of it. But to give you a little sample, 
um, not controlling your bladder, bowel issues, pressure sores, as you heard in his introduction. Um, these are all examples of secondary uh, conditions that we will experience. Um, and so today, uh, I mean, I like to go back and forth with Breen Brother Ahmad, so I'd like to share the mic with him, and then we're going to continue on with the subject. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's honor to be here with you guys and, you know, discuss some of our um, life experience and issue that we facing daily basis. And then I really appreciate Sister Noor, what she shared about her son. Um, it is amazing and it's, I think it's a blessing he have you as well as a mother because, um, Unfortunately, a lot of parents don't know how to take care of their child, their special need child, and they both end up with um, a lot of depression because they don't know how to handle it. And uh, but mashallah, you are very well educated and uh, you know what to do. And may Allah give you patience and strength, you know, uh, guiding him to the right way. So uh, my name is Ahmed Al Kubaisi. Um, Gonna share a little bit about my story. If I'm, I'm sure most of you heard uh, me speaking before, but I would like to share a little bit again and um, discuss some challenges that we go through in our daily basis life. Me and brother Abdullah, and I believe you know, special needs and people with disability. We all have some common issues in our life. Probably is different. But uh, it's the same face, the same challenge. So um, I had my injury in 2007 by American sniper that I um, got shot back in my country in Iraq. And um, it's, you know, injured my spinal cord and um, kept me on the wheelchair, which I'm very thankful. I'm trying my best to keep my positivity in life and um, um, you know I move along a lot of uh, difficulties over the time in my life and uh, alhamdulillah it wasn't easy but um, the faith that we have as a Muslims like sometime I hear some people online um, going through a very severe depression which we all do sometimes go through a down moment and feel depressed and feel lonely and you know we have our own weird feelings but when we remember that we are Muslim we have our faith in Allah that's increase our our um, patient and patient is something extremely important in life um, that's um, also uh, Rabbul Alami subhanahu wa ta'ala he put the patient first, then the prey. So he said, So um, what I learned over time, you know, and I did research, why did Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala put the patient first then the, the, before the prayer? Because, subhanAllah, I find out that if you don't have the patient, you're not even going to continue our, uh, you're not going to even be able to continue your, uh, your praying, your ibadat, because um, patient is something extremely important. And I feel that Allah bless us with it as a, as a Muslim, that we have this connection with him so sometime when we feel down we remember our gratitude our good things like we do have so many things to be thankful for so we pass we pass over the difficulty sometimes take more time than what we think but uh, we go through it which is it's a blessing itself so um i started you know after my injury i had um a lot of dramas right after my injury so um, I uh, I had I start having the bad sores as sister Ajman was uh, mentioning and that was something um, extremely difficult and severe for me after my injury beside being on a wheelchair 
but being in a wheelchair and you cannot use your wheelchair, that's also a different story. Like, um, it's, it's not, you cannot imagine it. So, subhanAllah, um, I start my journey with it for like five or six years with bad sores. And uh, it was severe. Um, so, I had the bones on my back was uh, showing because there's no meat there. Um, and dealing with infection and... Um, it was extremely difficult, but I was very fortunate that Allah blessed me with a special families. So my dad, he's a, um, uh, he's a physician assistant, and he do have some, he don't have a lot of background about people with disability because that's kind of like in you after the war, you know, um, Physicians and medicals people start facing those kind of things. Um, so, and then bless me with my mom who take care of me since day one. She was with me in the hospital all day, all night, 24-7. Um, literally, there is no word can describe how thankful I am to her. And... I think I forgot to mention that before in um, our presentation, but um, I'm glad that I got the opportunity to mention that. And um, she helped me so much, and they made the life much easier on me. And uh, they were with me, supporting me, guiding me to go over the, dif the difficulty that I'm facing. Until I decided to leave my country and move to Jordan, and it was shocked for them, like because I wasn't independent. I wasn't. I, my mom was helping me with everything, even the bathroom, even the shower, even whatever, you name it. I wasn't independent at all. But I made my decision that I feel and I believe that my life will be better if I leave because... Um, I start facing a lot of uh, health issue, and there is no enough treatment for me back in my country. So that's number one reason was for me to take this decision and move forward with it. And uh, subhanAllah, Allah was with me always and with everyone, but it, it was a special moment when I decided to leave my country by myself. I wasn't independent at all. I don't know what I'm going to do in Jordan, but I just need to leave my country. I'm looking for a safe place. That was my number one target at that time. And in 2010, I left my country. I uh, went to Jordan. I stayed there for three years and um, also going through a lot of uh, hospitals and uh, surgeries and stuff like that. So, subhanAllah... It was um, a big step for me to learn how to be independent, how to use the bathroom by myself, how to take care of my wounds. Because I do have, at that time, I remember I had three wounds, one big one in my bag and two on my side. So I have to do dressing for my wounds three times a day. And that was something like, I was thinking it's impossible for me. But subhanAllah, over time, like, from so the first day I remember at the hotel, um, I did not uh, look at my wound on the mirror because I was afraid of seeing my own wound. And uh, the second day, the third day, I'm doing dressing three times a day, but I'm also nervous. I don't need to see my wound because it's... I don't feel it, but I am scared. So subhanAllah, um, after like a couple of days, I took the mirror and looked at my wound, and it was like really scary, and it was severe. And uh, I start also going to the hospitals back and forth, and then I spend my mo most of my time in the hospitals uh, in Jordan as well until I arrived to the U.S., MashaAllah, and uh, I also end up in the hospital. Not the first day, but the second day. 
The second day, I went to the hospital, and I spent 14 months over there. So I spent 14 months in the hospital. Um, it was extremely difficult. New culture for me. A new environment, and such and such. So um, I like I don't know what to do, but I always look at the bright side. There is something good will come out of it. I wasn't speaking any English during that time, and um, I spent 14 months in the hospital until I decided I sign up my chart to leave the hospital on my own responsibility because I didn't see any improve. I mean, I saw a little improvement, but it's not huge improvement for my wound that I had in my back. So all my friend was calling me like crazy and they were against me and um, they, they wasn't happy for me doing that decision. But I decided to do that because I don't see an improvement. And I know my body more than anyone else, more than a doctor, more than anyone. And then I was always asking my, my physician to uh, let me meet um, a surgeon to talk to him. And uh, they always, oh, you don't need that, you don't need that. You know, you just have to be patient over time, over time, until they push me to that curve when I sign out my uh, paper and I left the hospital. And uh, subhanAllah, I start a new journey looking for a surgeon. I find the surgeon, and he was a general surgeon. Um, uh, it's a friend, a friend who recommended that person to me, this doctor. And he was like, you're absolutely right. Your wound won't heal without surgery. So subhanAllah, in 2015, I start, I start seeing the light. I start moving into the right direction. When I um, did my skin graft surgery um, in Alameda, and my wound starts healing. That's when I start uh, my hope again. So um, I'm going to stop until here and give the mic to Brother Abdullah. He can share more with you. And uh, inshallah, you will learn more about me. Jazakallah khair, Brother Ahmed. Um, there are a few things I'd like to highlight on what he said. First, the sister who spoke earlier is that... Um, the community of the disabled are, are kind of are invisible. This is something that uh, is nothing new. It's been going on since the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Um, and so I like to highlight, you know, th there are many events that I've been in the past few weeks, so I, I'm only giving them credit of the stories that they have taught me. Um, I forgive my lack of uh, knowledge, but there is a Sahaba that out there that was physically blind, and he had the responsibility to give the Adhan. Um, who gave him this role? The community did. He was perfectly enabled to, you know, to give the event. And but however, since he's visually impaired, um, it's very fascinating that the, he didn't. They didn't give him the one uh, event that's simple, the fajr. He was responsible for all four of the ones that are after, and so he relied on the community members to assist him to see whether if it's time or not. And so, putting people in position into being a function in society is something that's very huge for our. For the, for the mothers and fathers of people with disability needs. Um, like everyone said, uh, who is there in the beginning to supply support? The family members. Um, but we are also an ummah. Let us not forget that. Um, Mosin is an event that I went recently and they had a board in the back to say, what is this, what is this organization all about? Um, when I was reading it, a lot of it was inclusivity, you know, belongingness, but uh, what I didn't see that I had to write and put up there was to complete the ummah. We are part of this, and we need to be uh, members in the masjids. We need to be members of the workforce. There, uh, This country of America, there is this thing called ADA. Um, it gives rights to people with disabilities to have the needs that they need to be more independent. For example, ramps, elevators, uh, parking spots, um, these are just as an example, and so for me, in the Islamic world, it's not there. Uh, forgive me, 
I went to Turkey recently, and the masjids there are not accessible. When I went to the Masjid Sophia, uh, I was blessed to be uh, assisted by the, the people. However, if I had a, a electric chair that weighs more than our manual chair, it would be impossible for me to visit the site. Um, so I, I had to put myself in their shoes and be like, what about my other brothers and sisters who are in different situations? Alhamdulillah, the special needs family, some people are able to walk, able to you know, use all their motor uh, their limbs. Um, but for people like us in this classification, we are paralyzed from chest down, and um, there are very limits. But alhamdulillah, we can, we can be carried. Those are options. Um, but for another example um, that I can talk about, that the secondary, er secondary injuries that we're talking about, um, they're life-threatening. Uh, those who get sores, who get UTIs, you know, and all this, um, we could potentially die if we don't take care of it. And so we are blessed to be more in tune with our bodies. Um, and so for those who think that this is a, a trial and tribulation, which it is, just remember that or Allah SWT is giving us a test to be more connected. Um, that's how I see it. Uh, so just I'd like to just explain that a little more earlier. But then um, for what I like to also talk about is that how is the masjid providing um, for us the ability to come? Now, I'll, now I just... This is the second time this happened to me. Um, the two masjids that are setting the criterion of what a masjid should be is MCC and MCA. MCA is located in Santa Clara. It's one of the biggest masjids that I've been to, and it's, alhamdulillah, a blessing. Um, now, they're only, now, this masjid has more than one handicap stall, and over the years, they had listened to us, mashallah, and so they have created a bathroom where it's much bigger for those with family that needs to enter it with, the, with their child. You know, things happen, you know, uh, bladder moves, bladder accidents may happen. And so people in our situation need assistance, alhamdulillah. And so our mothers or brothers and sisters can come in and help us. But if the facility is not able for us to get clean, then the family members are not going to show up. Uh, I mean, there are many times where it happened to me and, I, and where the facility wasn't uh, accommodating. We have to go in our vehicles smelling bad, driving home, and you know, it, it leaves an impact on you because you're like, wait, do I, do I really want to put myself in this situation again? Do I want to have the masjid also be you know, uh, burdened with my burden? So uh, alhamdulillah, uh, they, they have more handicap stalls here, but uh, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining, but alhamdulillah, these handicap stalls do have these baby, uh, what's the word, kind of gonna help me, these baby stations. And so a lot of these baby station doors don't close. They actually come back and swing back down. And to open the door, you can't really open the door fully, so you can't really fit in. So my request is that for those who are listening who have these facilities, uh, just take a look around and test the facility, well, the, the water facilities to see whether if it is accessible. Alhamdulillah, you know, things do break down, and uh, so sometimes we have to just service them. Um, and in other regards, of course, is parking lots. Alhamdulillah, uh, MCA is doing a remarkable job. Um, again, I cannot stress this enough. Disability, it, it is invisible, but for us showing up to the masjid is a chance for us to bring changes. And so I've been going to uh, MCA due to the fact because my wheelchair is broken. I don't have to go to work. Um, so for those who are wondering why I'm here at work, uh, my chair is still broken. But um, Essentially, uh, what I've learned with MCA is that uh, those who are managing the parking lot, you can actually give them your number. You can you know, exchange contacts to say that, hey, brother or sister, I'll be coming late. Is there uh, a spot that you can reserve for me in the front? Now, if you guys go to MCA, you can see how, mashallah, the many cars are out there. And there are very few parking lots that are uh, accommodating. So they do set up cones. You do see the reserve signs here at the, in this masjid too for the imams. And so, alhamdulillah, we are, you know, amongst that status where we need that special accommodation. So don't be shy. Ask your local masjids whether if they can accommodate you to reserve a spot. Um, what else I can talk about? Uh, I'll give the mic to Brother Ahmad because I'm running out of ideas. So one thing I want to mention, that his, wheel, his current wheelchair is broken, and I offered him to fix his chair right after this presentation, and he refused. <laughs> he said, how? how you? I said, I'm going to fix it for you. And he said, it's impossible. I said, no, I think it's impossible. 
just so hopefully he he have the time so he allow me to fix his wheelchair because it's literally unsaved so the situation that he is in right now it's unsaved so we'll see okay uh, back to the topic. So we'll talk about the accessibility and how Masjid, mashallah, especially MCC, it's um, doing a great job. And um, as Brother Abdullah was saying, there's a lot of places here in the U.S. We don't need to talk about overseas because I lived, I'm from Iraq and I lived in Jordan. And um, I travel here and there. And I know what accessibility mean when I leave the U.S. I don't feel it sometimes because everything is, uh, it's available, almost everything available for us. Like, um, I can be very independent. I don't need assistance from anyone to put me in and out of the building. But that's impossible to find it somewhere else in the world. It's literally impossible. So... Like, um, so I'm going to Jordan on the 15th of April, inshallah. And on my way back, on my way here to the masjid, I was talking to my friend who's also in disability. So he's using a walker. He don't use a wheelchair in Jordan. And I was like, can you please check for me an accessible apartment over there? Because I need to rent an apartment because all my family going to visit me in, in Jordan, inshallah. So it's really, really, really hard to just walk in to a hotel or to an apartment building to find accessibility. If it's not impossible, it is extremely hard. So that's one thing we must be very thankful for. And as Brother Abdullah was mentioning, if you walk into a masjid, for example, and you do need some special accommodation, you just welcome to go and talk to the masjid representative and um, ask for your need. And let's let's try because we are in Ummah. Let's try to make our environment more accessible for people with a special needs, people with disability. And I feel, I do really feel so happy, especially when I come to the MCC, which I don't think, I've been in MCA a couple times. But I find myself mostly here at the MCC. I feel like family. I feel like home. And uh, mashallah, it's extremely accessible. I don't think there is any um, thing need to be adjusted. One thing we discuss about me and Brother Abdullah uh, before, um, you know, we are running our wheelchair anywhere. And our wheelchair is like shoes. And it's not clean. It's dirty. So when we enter the masjid, how can we prepare? So we were thinking about like having a special spot in the masjid in the prayer hall to use for our wheelchair. And um, I think last year in Ramadan, I discussed that with uh, Brother Munir. And he is like, Ahmed, do you mind if you just wipe your wheels? And I said, absolutely not. I would love, that's absolutely make me more comfortable. So Clorox wipes, baby wipes, just swipe your wheels and enjoy running around the masjid. And unfortunately, Brother Munir is not here today because I would uh, need to ask him about also uh, having like a small table by the bathroom that we use up front and uh, have some Clorox wipes for us. So we and when we use the restroom, we come out, we wipe our tires and, and be more comfortable and keep the masjid, you know, purifier and, uh, and, and clean as much as we, we can. Yeah. Uh, that actually reminds me of what Brother Ahmed said earlier about his sabr. Uh, I like to just focus on that more. Um, you may ask for sabr, but remember that Khadawan may give you more trials and tribulations to test your patience. So if you may, please ask for mercy. Because sometimes one cannot handle the test of sabr. So just be mindful of that. So just be careful what you pray for. Um, number two, um, I like to share what happened yesterday because uh, I don't mind uh, 
exposing our disabilities is the place where we can start making changes. When I was at MCA yesterday, uh, there was a brother Shohei Webb and you know Kiyom Knight, and then they're giving lectures. I'm somebody who sits all day, Brother Ahmad as well too, so I can't imagine for those who sit for hours on end. So I had the luxury, me and Brother Ahmad, we do have the strength to you know, go down on the wheelchair. So I went on the floor, I used my seat cushion for support, and then after, someone was so kind to bring me some chai, and so I don't know if you guys know, it is diuretic, meaning that it helps produce more urine. And so when I was sitting there stretching for the next two hours, um, I noticed that I leaked. Um, and so I looked down, I saw a puddle of urine, and I got very embarrassed. I was like, what do I do? Oh, my God. Because right now there's an event happening. I'm sitting next to the sisters, aisle two. This is humiliating. But I was like, you know what? Just let me look around and see what I can do. I had my uh, cafe on, so I used that to wipe up everything. I had my baby wipes. I had everything in my backpack, so I was fully prepared. So for those who are want to tend the masjid, make sure you bring everything you need, spare clothes, chucks, uh, baby wipes. Alhamdulillah, the masjids here do have the bidet. Um, some, them, some of them have, do have showers. Unfortunately, the one in MCA, the shower does not have a, uh, a, a bench for me to use. So I knew that there was one toilet that had the bidet. So luckily it wasn't number two because if it was number two, it would have been, a lot, it would have been impossible because just imagine the mess. Now, forgive me for sharing this uh, this event, but you know, life happens. You know, things happen, um, and so I was uh, I didn't I was so ashamed that I didn't even tell my mother. She's looking at me right now. She's in front of me, um, but you know, bless her soul. So like I I secretly just like you know was able to clean up. I the brother that brought me chai. I was like, listen, um, this is the situation. Um, I'm just gonna do this. He was like, no problem, brother. I'm gonna push you to the bathroom. All is well. Um, there was a slide of shame, but I'm in Allah's house. Why Why am I being ashamed? I was like, this is a blessing that I'm part of the ummah again. And and, and I took care of it, alhamdulillah. Uh, I put everything in my clothes, my backpack, all the dirty clothes. I was able to stay for qiyam. And then, I, and I let it go. I didn't let it fester. I didn't let it bother me. Parents, I understand that you guys have to deal with this every single day. Uh, when I got first paralyzed, my mother, bless her soul, she didn't want me to uh, do anything. A mother's love is, it is mercy, an example of Allah's mercy. And, and I cannot stress that enough to see that miracle in itself. Um, a father's love is different. Uh, we all know this. Uh, but a mother's love is unique in that she will do anything for you. Uh, just like Brother Ahmad said, a mother will go into the shower and scrub your own back. You know, And here I am, a grown man. But... It's my mom. You know, I, I, again, it's a little shameful, but you know that's the situation. I'm giving her the blessing to do that, and so why rob the community of this opportunity to give blessing? Um, another thing that I want to talk about is now. While uh, Brother Ahmad did share his story of how he got wounded, um, for this example, I will not. Maybe next year, wherever, you can look up the YouTube video. You can see what I what happened to me. Uh, but the point of this story is that uh, me and Brother Ahmad talked about this. Sometimes, you know, we may be having a bad day. And we're out in the community and someone will be like, oh, what happened to you? Why are you in a wheelchair? You're so, look at you, you're a young person, you're very blessed. How could, how, how could this happen? And so we have to deal with this every single day. We wake up reminded that we are in this situation. And to have a community member to come up to us and be like, oh, ignorantly just coming up to us politely or, you know, upsetly. It's just something that uh, be mindful of because who are you? <laughs> you know, hi, my name is Abdullah. What's your name? You know, there's, there's usually there's an etiquette involved into, you know, introducing yourself to a fellow brethren. The word salamu alaikum is something so powerful. If you actually look up the meaning, you're actually trying to give peace to the other person. And if you give salam to somebody and you ask them this direct question, are you really giving their salams? So just be really mindful. Um, sometimes, you know, we could give the opportunity to share the story. For children, I will always tell them my story because they're innocent. And it's an opportunity to teach them something. While every individual is a potential believer, maybe we don't have the patience to educate them. And so I just want to share that with you because 
there are days where I do have my I'm, I have, I'm on a spiritual highness and I'm able to uh, answer in a way where I can show that this is Allah's test for me. Who am I to um, think twice on his uh, condition that he's given me? And so there are moments where I can do that. But just remember, we are human beings, you know. And so there are times where we may be a little spicy. That's really beautiful, Brother Abdullah. Uh, we do always have to remind ourselves that, you know, we have the ability to do the change, but we have to be patient. And, uh, you know, we are here in one community, and um, thanks to MCC for giving us the opportunity to be more close to each other as a community. Uh, as a people with disability or special needs and um, you know we can we can talk and invest more uh, time on how can we help our community how can we be better in our community we can start that from ourselves and um, also one thing I want to mention for people with disability there is an event been going for a long time and I believe there is not a lot of people now about it it's called ability expo so the ability expo it's basically made for everyone with disability but mostly for physical disability mostly so what does that what is the Ability Expo is? So, unfortunately, they used to make it here in San Mateo. But since the pandemic, I heard they increase the leasing amount of the building and they no longer make it in Bay Area at all, unfortunately. So the Ability Expo, it's giving you and giving the parents and giving the person who's in disability, the opportunity to explore the world in a wide angle from so many different devices, um, a new uh, way for you know accessibility, accommodation, a device, uh, vehicles. Um, if you have like a sport, like this event I attend um, like three weeks ago, it was in LA. So I have to fly all the way to LA for two days to attend this event because it's, it's remarkable. It's, it's, it's like I really can't miss it anymore, which I haven't attended for a couple years. So this year, and I, I promised myself, I said, as much as I can, I will never miss this event again because it does have so many things like something you thought of or a device that you look into or you know it's it's just unbelievable and he, the most beautiful things for me that i was with my community it so it's a huge a huge uh, place full of people with disability different kind and also the most important things for me, I was thinking about it on my way to the airport, that um, I, I was very thankful. Why? Because I can move my hand. I can do a lot of activities. But what I saw at the expo, people moving their power chair with their tongue. With their tongue. That's the only part of their body is moving. It is unbelievable. So we have to be extremely thankful. Like, I move my head. I can eat. I can speak. I move my, uh, my, my head. You know? So I was like, oh my God. That's unbelievable. So I be more thankful. And I have to, you know, look forward to be better, to do better. And then um, I also would like why I'm sharing this with with people because like some sometimes people like feel down like why did Allah test me with these things so that you know it's tested from Allah but you asking why don't say why say Alhamdulillah 
there is some people worse in a situation worse than yours. So I really highly recommend for people, especially with physical disability, if you know somebody, if you know, you have one of your family, if you take him to that place, that person will be extremely thankful to you. So in the same flight, I met one family also flying from, uh, from Richmond, California, to LA to attend this event. So people coming all around the world, especially in the US, there is no excuse. Just go and explore and take your child, take your, you know, take your, take the person that's in need for that to go and explore and try different things. It's extremely amazing. Uh, we do have 15 minutes left for a talk, so uh, if you want to finish that talk. Yeah, so um, I think we discover everything. Um, I really want to leave the mic to you guys. If you have any question, if you have any thought, anything, feel free to ask because uh, I'm no longer feeling shy of answering any question, especially about my disability. Life is beautiful. It is easy. Yes, it is easy when we make it easy because it's all mindset. If we said easy, it's gonna be easy. If we need it to be d difficult, we're gonna have a huge excuse from here to your home, right? Uh, before I do more Q&A, I just two things I wanna say before, sister. Um, now, there is an agency called Muslim. Uh, this is an agency, or sorry, a nonprofit that helps uh, Muslims in this community and also across America, and how the masjid or mosque can be more accommodating to people with special needs. Um, now, there is nothing for physical disability needs because, uh, alhamdulillah, we can participate, but this agency, what they do is that to provide programs such as uh, learn how to, children can learn how to read the Quran, memorization, learn how to uh, lead prayer. Um, they also make sure that the mosque is, um, I mean, of course, with any institution in America, it has to be ADA compliant. But they are doing their due diligence to make sure that, you know, that things are still available. What they're also doing is that they are providing uh, services for family to go make umrah. And so this is something that I've learned with through MCC. And so this is very remarkable. Now, I don't know if they have any financial aid because, of course, with the disabled community and especially this community, everything's extremely expensive. We all know this. Um, and so, alhamdulillah, maybe, you know, now that we they know this, that everything is just more, more expensive for us, perhaps we can see if there's accommodations for the finances part as well. Um, alhamdulillah, last couple years ago when I came here, I met a brother who's special needs. Uh, and so he was interested in doing physical activities. Uh, Bay Air Outreach and Recreational Program is not a Muslim uh, agency, but however, uh, it's a community uh, place where you can partake in wheelchair basketball, uh, uh, skiing, scuba diving, canoeing, wall climbing, cycling. Uh, alhamdulillah, there are so many options. And just like how Brother Ahmad said that when you amongst other people with your, uh, with your situation, it does bring a sense of belongingness. And it, I cannot stress that enough how amazing one will feel because when you see others with different abilities um, you're just in awe uh, and it does tap into your spirit and then you're like wow uh, you're not alone and so I, I just like to stress these two agencies um, and so uh, if you need to know their uh, their names or contact information please come to me or brother Ahmed the big specials again is a remarkable place too but uh, I just want to share those three uh, resources for you now for the Q&A How many, what? I don't know, I can't answer that. That's only Allah knows. I had a couple questions that I wrote down while you guys were speaking. Um, you guys kind of touched upon, um, you know, for example, how uh, you, 
people with disabled uh, people with disabilities are way more than just their disability. Um, and I had one of the questions that I wrote down was, um, in your experience, do you guys have any type of you know strategies that people who do not have these types of disabilities that can help these people feel more welcomed in their community? Like that's one of the. I have a couple more questions, but maybe we can go one by one. Beautiful. Go ahead. Excellent. Okay. So, uh, 18 years being in this situation, I finally learned the ability to use the power of the tongue. Now, um, you know me. I am a very silent person. I had a hard time asking for help. Um, and so, um, a lot of people don't have the ability to uh, ask for help. And so, it's really, really humbling when someone comes up to you and be like, hey, brother or sister, is there anything I can do for you? It's that simple. Um, sister, what was your question <laughs> that we skipped? So now I'm saying thank, thank you both for being so generous for sharing your experiences. Um, uh, my question is, you know, from the perspective of a mom who who does, you know, care for a child who may have um, extra needs, and I, I know there are a few moms in in the crowd. Uh, something that you shared really stuck with me about needing to be independent and like you know that your mom would do everything for you um and so i'm curious like if you could um it, it's like a it's a hard thing to know whether you know to um fill in gaps or to just treat your kid like everybody else like knowing that he's already going to be perceived differently you know, from the rest of the world. And so if there's any advice that either of you could give to, um, you know, ways to, yeah, make, make your kid feel um, like that sense of autonomy and also like just. Tess, thank you. SubhanAllah, Bismillah, Rahman. Okay, so um, I'm glad that you said this. So one thing differently is that we were not born this way, so um, it's it's a bit different. I understand that uh, we do have a taste of both worlds, so I know it'd be very different if you had someone who was born with this. But for me to, if I may, mother, uh, forgive me if I'm putting you on the spot. Uh, when I got hurt, I was in I was a college student, and so I I realized that my the home was not accessible for me. And so that was the first thing that I've noticed that was in disabling me even more. While my mother and siblings were there for me, um, again, as my cousin said, uh, uh, I, I was not able to use my tongue and ask for help. Um, There's a sense of shame and guilt because I, this, I felt like I did this to myself rather than this was a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so immediately I, I didn't, I feel like it, I was in the position to be independent in that household. While the hospital did provide everything for me, uh, accessible shower, accessible bathroom, getting on the bed, using the kitchen. They even had a modeled home for me to test to see how I can live independently. And that was beautiful. But when I came home and how my parents are not you know, financially stable or, or well off where I, they and they were renting the place, it was very, uh, I was very ashamed to ask the landlord to even do this. And so when I wanted to go back to school, I asked my, my beloved mother, I was like, please let me dorm there. I, I, be, why, why commute? Take that, take that time and hassle away from that, from that formula. And so she said no. <laughs> um, I, I understand her anxiety. Uh, alhamdulillah, I was studying psychology, so I, I, I knew what, was, what she was saying. So luckily, I had one other parent. So I had to ask my father for his blessings, and he gave me the blessings. So I went where? I left Fremont, California to go to Carson City. Sorry, yeah, in Los Angeles to see if I can dorm there. Uh, alhamdulillah, having a, an ummah of Muslims, they're there. Uh, so mothers and fathers, don't be afraid. You know, the community is strong. But uh, this is, again, a different type of disability. So um, I understand that it may be different. Let me share something that because um, uh, different environments, so we are here in the U.S. And mom is hard. Don't tell me about it. It's everywhere, same thing. So one thing I realized sometime for the parents, especially 
they just like to give all the help, all the support, and sometimes they don't think about it for the long term or down the road. So like, I need to help him with this, I need to help him with that, I need to do this for him. I believe that's not correct. It, not always, you know. You should, you should give some responsibility to your child, I believe. So my situation was extremely different. Um, I kind of like pulled myself away and started, started my own self, start figuring out what do I need to do. Uh, start figuring out what do I need to do. But by giving your child the responsibility, and I know your heart with him, but you have to show him some responsibility. You, he has to learn something. And instead of keeping yourself the providers all the time. In your experience, what are some strategies that you've seen implemented that can create a more inclusive experience and environment for people with all types of disabilities? We talked about how the masjid can be accommodating, but um, it's very important to see that the parents see their child more financially stable and also in, uh, in the love relationship. Marriage opportunities, work opportunities. Um, and uh, I understand finance is such a huge thing, so I don't know whether if the Ummah can provide some sort of financial resources. Here in California and in America, there are certain states that will give you uh, financial, like SSI, Social Security, um, to give you some little financial independence. However, through my experience is that once you lose the low income status and become middle income status, you, there's a lot more trials and tribulations. Um, as a part-time employee at Apple, uh, my insurance has given me such a hard time to get a new wheelchair. Such uh, accommodations that I need to go to point like electric assist uh, mobility devices are not accommodating. So unfortunately for those who are listening, low income is a good place to start and stay in that, uh, that that medium of income. That way you can learn a lot um, what it means that will affect you if you make more money. Marriage, I understand that's something, I mean, that's that's the gift from Allah. So whoever plants that, uh, that, that love, that seed in anybody's hearts, parents, um, give them that opportunity. Don't be afraid of the divorce. Don't be afraid, you know, just allow them to experience that because that gives you the opportunity of having a break um, so I do think marriage will be a wonderful opportunity. So, Banker Hall, can you take the test? I'm going to take the state house. Okay. Thank you.